Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez for LearnSolidWorks.com, and today we're going to take a look at creating an organic shower head. Now in the interest of time, I've started the sketch for us already, so I suggest that you come in here, you look at what we have, and pause the video. Now the first thing you'll notice is I've made some references, right? So I have, starting at the origin, an 8-inch line that goes to the left, a two inch line that goes straight down, and then I've connected them, so I made a, a nice right triangle. Now again, this is just the basis for our file. This is where all the references are gonna come from. On the left-hand side, that's collinear with the hypotenuse of that triangle, is I've made the bottom end, which is going to be the fitting for our shower head, right? So this is gonna be the fitting down here. Really the only reason that it's there is sort of as a reference. So I've made three quarters long, it's got a quarter inch on the bottom, three eighths on the top, and then this line will just connect those. So we're gonna make a solid revolve there. And if we go up to the right hand side, I've started the shower head. So from the origin, I've got a one inch line going straight down. I've got a four inch length on the upper arc. This is a three point arc. And it's got a vertical relation between these two ends. So they're both four inches long. And they both have a radius value of 40. Now I didn't make them equal just in case I decide I wanna come back in here and maybe I wanna make this one less of an angle on top, whatever the case might be. Uh, so those are not equal. They both have their own radius value applied to them. Now, the reason I stopped it at this point is because this is a great area for us to start to talk about making our curvature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating a style spline. Now, this is something that's been in SOLIDWORKS for uh, one or two releases. I'm using 2016 here. 2017 is now starting to come out in beta. Uh, and there are some new surfacing tools. 2015, uh, roughly the same in terms of functionality with the exception of the look. It looks a little bit different. Now, if you're in SOLIDWORKS 2016 Service Pack 3 or above, you can actually change the look of this back to the old yellow and blue sort of color scheme instead of this gray color scheme. But this is probably what most people are used to seeing at this point in 2016. So I started with my style spline, and you'll notice that I have spline types. Now, by default, it's gonna be on Bezier, and it has a B spline, which is degree three, five, or seven. This is essentially means the number of intermediate points you put in there. So four, six, or eight. Now, automatically, if I place those number of points, it'll convert to that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to make something that has nice curvature continuous edges on it. And to do that, I'm gonna start by creating and try not to snap to anything. I'm not gonna to snap to tangent. I'm not gonna to snap to horizontal. I wanna apply those manually. I'm gonna go one line segment, two, three, and I'm gonna place one in intermediate, and then I'm gonna go one, two, three line segments all the way back, and then I'm gonna hit escape to end that. So we'll make this merged. We'll take the first line and we'll make it tangent. We'll do the same thing up top. You might have to zoom in based on the curvature here. We'll take that first line and make it tangent. Now here's the important thing we wanna do. Is I'm gonna take these first three lines, make them collinear, and I'm also gonna make them equal. It simplifies my process a little bit. I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom, make all three of those collinear. I'm gonna make them equal as well. Now the main reason I made them equal is because it's much easier for us to drag these without having them overlap each other. So what this allows me to do is have three sections, so a third degree coming out of this area and a third going into the bottom. This makes for a much nicer set of curvature combs. So if we select the spline and we look at show curvature, you can see that we have nice smooth transitions here. Now if I pull this end in, you can see that everything is nice and smooth and even on the, the top and the bottom. Now, even if I drag this into a very tight spot, you see the curvature is still very nice and very smooth. So this tells me that I've got really nice curvature going into and out of this section. Now, if I drag both of these back and keep them fairly equal, um, everything's gonna look pretty good. I can pull this in, so you see that we start to get some concavity over here in the curvature combs, but we have a nice, smooth, rounded transition. All right, so these are the types of things that we want to look for when we're working on consumer products or smooth designs like this. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to select that. I'm going to turn the curvature combs back off because I don't like to see them uh, after I'm done setting this up. If you're happy with it, we could, of course, go back and we could apply some dimensions. Uh, for instance, we can give this a length. 
0.18. Uh, we could do the same thing down here. This one's a little bit smaller, 0.17. And then we could also dimension you know, the location of this point in terms of these points and so on. And that would help us fix this uh, because once we give this a length because of the equal relation, we can no longer drag it. The only thing we can do is move this point out. All right. So I'm pretty happy with everything here. Let's fit to screen. We'll exit the sketch and we'll start with some revolves. So I'm gonna do these as solids. I need to select the contour, in this case, this one here, and the axis of revolution is gonna be this axis right here. All right, so this is the shower head, and we can instantly see that it's pretty big, all right? But that's okay, it's pretty big. We're gonna say okay. I wanna show that sketch again, and I like to actually expand the display pane here makes it a little bit easier to show and hide sketches. And then I wanna do another revolve. I'm gonna take this guy right here and I'm gonna deselect merge results. It won't merge because they're not touching, but I'm gonna deselect it anyways. Now it says here, the sketch is open. So we wanna, we wanna make sure that we go into selected contours and select that closed region and say, okay. All right, so as we look at this from a front view, that obviously this is too close to be a handle. This is great because everything we did was back in that original sketch. We just come in here and we say, let's push this out 16 inches. That looks a little bit more realistic. Maybe this one needs to go down four or five inches and we'll say, okay. That looks a whole lot better, all right? So now the handle is, is down here. This one, you know, is, is sort of the appropriate size for this. And now we can make something that sort of connects the two. All right, so at this point, the next step for us to do is to make some more references. I'm gonna show sketch one, and I'm gonna to start to sketch on the front plane. So what we wanna do is we wanna to start to connect this geometry up here. I'm gonna start that by creating a line at this point, and I'm just gonna draw it up 0.5, right? And I wanna make sure that this is collinear. It can also just be perpendicular with this line. The important thing is that it's in the same plane as the end of this fitting. All right, that's gonna be the starting point for my surface. We'll make a revolve there and then we'll sort of move forward from there. But where are we gonna take this to? So I'm gonna start by creating a spline and I'm gonna use a traditional spline instead of a style spline. It's probably something most of you are more used to working with. And I'll start at that point and I'll sort of drag it up and I'll use two points. Now, traditionally, I don't like to use an intermediate point and often I'll go back and delete it uh, but sometimes when you're just starting to create this geometry, it might be good to, to sort of work that out. All right, so as we're looking at this, I wanna make sure that this is collinear or tangent to that line. That's how I want the handle to flow. And I can also go in and I can uh, delete that edge and I can simply control this with uh, this, this handle at the top here. Now, the important thing is that this is actually gonna come up closer to this edge up here but we're gonna give it a dimension. We're gonna say, we wanna keep this half inch below. Now remember, this is the center of us. Uh, we have a one inch tall edge here, and we wanna keep this half inch below. Now its location doesn't really matter in this case, we can add a dimension, but the entire point of conceptualizing these types of designs is sort of at the beginning, you leave them underdefined, so you can push and pull and move things around inside these sketches. And then once you're happy with the shapes, happy with the designs, then you'll start to lock these things down. Now for me, I wanna take this edge and I wanna make it horizontal. All right, so that handle is now horizontal. So we're going directly into our shape of the shower head here. So we have tangency with this edge here, this line, which means that anytime we update that original sketch, that'll change. This will always stay half inch below. We could also instead put a relation to the center of this if we wanted to use a construction line. We could come from this midpoint uh, to here and delete this dimension. And that way we're always staying horizontal with that and we could even give this a, a dimension if we wish of let's say six and a half inches, that'll be okay. So that way if we ever go back and we change the height of the shower head, this will move up and down with it as well. All right, so at this point, what are we doing? What, do, what are we creating here? Now we only have this sort of, you know, artistic angle image of the shower head. So we're not really gonna be able to exactly replicate it, but we're looking at the general idea of making something like this, something nice and smooth that, that sort of blends between two shapes. We're going from 
roughly a cylindrical shape down here and we're blending up into this different shape. All right, so this is the general path that we're gonna be going and this is sort of the starting point for us. And we need to decide how we wanna control this. And we can do this a few different ways. We can create a loft that goes between a couple different places. We can create boundary surfaces. We can um, even do, depending on the sections, we can kind of do a sweep using a center line. But in this case, uh, what I really wanna focus on is some of the, the more advanced techniques. So we're gonna be using boundary surfaces and we're gonna be using something I like to call helper surfaces. So I'm gonna start another spline and I'm gonna go ahead this time and use a style spline again. Start from here. I'm gonna drag three lines out again and I'm gonna take one, two, and then at the third one, and I'm gonna go one, two, three up here as well. All right, so as we start these, this first line, I'm gonna control select this and make them perpendicular. And then I'm gonna take these three, make them collinear. And again, at this time, I'm also gonna make them equal. That just helps me control things a little bit easier. Now we're gonna to have to zoom way in for this one, and I'm gonna grab these three, and I'm gonna make sure that they're collinear, and I'm gonna make sure that they're equal as well. So those three are collinear and equal, All right? So we have these three sections, and I wanna make sure that, you can see that I can still move them up and down because I didn't make them horizontal or tangent to anything. I wanna actually take them up to this line, and I'm gonna make it vertical with this point. And then I wanna take this right here, and I'm gonna snap it to that line as well. It's saying that it's overdefined, and that's okay. We just really wanna make sure that we have some sort of relation here. I'm gonna make that horizontal. All right, so those are equal. I can now move things in and out. I've got that nice curvature. And how we're gonna control this is in the middle. All right, so we wanna make sure that we use these points to our advantage and move them around. And we might even have more control points than we even need. We can maybe delete one of these and simply use an individual intermediate control point to control most of our curvature. Now the center line is not gonna be used for much other than a reference we're gonna be using the outside and an inside portion. So as we're looking at this, we're starting to see the shape unfold. Let's go ahead and let's copy this line. So let's do another version of this line straight down. And I wanna make sure that it is both collinear and equal to that line, all right? So it's gonna give me the exact same position. So once we make a revolved surface, that's gonna be there. We'll go ahead and do another style spline. So again, one, two, three, then we'll throw an intermediate point in here and then we'll come up and say one, two, and three. All right, so this first one, we'll try to auto apply some relation, but usually it's not very persistent. We wanna make sure that it's perpendicular there. Then we wanna take these three lines and again, I'm making them collinear. Now, do you have to make them collinear and equal? No, you don't. It just helps create a nice consistent weight in terms of the tangency of this curve, a nice consistent weight and curvature coming out of this area, all right? So if you just have, in this case, let's go ahead and just pull these up. I'll make this one uh, horizontal. I'll make this point vertical in relation to this. So this applies tangency coming out, all right? So you don't necessarily have to do that. And let's go ahead and show the curvature. All right, so you see what happens here. Look at the curvature, how it comes out and then it has this drastic change from concave to convex, and that happens to fall right in the middle of this line, right? So that directly falls at the midpoint of this line. Now, if we take this line and this line and make them collinear, and we also make them equal, look how that changed that curvature, right? We still have some bad stuff going on right here, but that's no longer a big jump, it's no longer a big step. We have a nice smooth transition here, even though it's not very good to have that. We take this third section and we'll make that one collinear and equal as well. We start to get an even better situation here. Well, now the curvature doesn't dip below and go up. It now starts here, has a nice smooth transition, even though it, it ramps up pretty quickly, has a nice smooth transition. And at the place where it switches from concave to convex, it's a nice gradual transition across that line. Uh, so this is a much better situation, something that we would look forward to um, rather than be worried about, right? So, this point can still move, uh, we can still move these lines up. We might wanna give it uh, a dimension because we don't have the same relation up here. We might wanna give it uh, a half inch dimension. You notice that it's telling me that it can't apply it. So in this case, we might wanna come in and we might wanna add 
a four construction line right here and we'll go over to this point and then we'll try to make this horizontal and now it allows us to add that. So again, we're relating this information back to the revolve, which is of course the most important section here. Um, that revolve is going to allow us to help control the curvature as it changes. All right, so these three are equal, they're collinear, same thing at the bottom. And then I sort of have this one intermediate section here. All right, so this is gonna help us control the curvature. Now remember the black section here, this is sort of just a center line we're using as a reference. Uh, what we really wanna see is it gets thinner up in this area and you might need to hold down the control key so you're not accidentally snapping to anything. And then we might wanna come in here and right click and insert a control vertex at another point and then pull this down, all right? So this is gonna allow us to change the shape of the handle. You see how it gets narrow here and then it might get wider down here. It's gonna help us control that. Now it might look a bit crazy on the screen with all these spline handles uh, and that does tend to happen. But for the most part, everything looks pretty good. We're gonna say okay. And we're gonna take a look at making some helper surfaces. So we're gonna start by going to our surface tab and making an extrude. Now, one thing you'll notice is it tries to grab a bunch of different areas, all right? So if you don't want that entire contour, you might need to clear the selection. We might need to go back and make some of this construction. Uh, for us, it's okay, it doesn't really matter. It won't affect our selection process at all. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use that to our advantage. The distance does not matter at all. This is only here so we can grab an edge and apply a tangency relation or a curvature relation. And again, is this a step that you absolutely have to do? No, you don't have to do this. You could use this sketch and you could put a normal two relation and it would give you the same thing. Uh, I just like to have these helper surfaces because in some cases, these helper surfaces are not just a standard extrude. You might have to draft them, for instance. All right, so in this case, if we were making this to be molded and we needed to make sure that we had enough draft on it, we could add draft to our helper surfaces. We could draft them inward or outward. And then the drafted surfaces would allow us to start our, our boundaries or our revolves or whatever surfaces we're gonna be creating. And then they would have that one degree, two degree of draft on them. So in this case, we've started the process of creating these. I'm gonna hide the original sketch here. And now what we wanna do is we wanna create a surface here. All right, so I'm just gonna sketch on that face. I'm gonna draw a circle and I'm gonna snap it up to this point. So I'm gonna draw a circle from the origin. And I'm gonna to snap to this point. Now the reason I snap to that point instead of actually going back and, and applying a dimension if this sketch changes and that point moves up, for instance, if this becomes 0.625, that circle is going to go up as well. So let's go ahead and rebuild this. So that circle raises up. Let's go ahead and undo that. And we'll change this back to 0.5. Go ahead and rebuild it. All right, so now you can see how that changes. We can also, again, we could have come in and we could have made those two lines construction, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete them. And then I'm gonna make a planar surface off of this circle, All right? So as we're looking at this, this does produce sort of an interesting problem because now this edge, if we use it as a selection, goes all the way around. But the good thing is we use the front plane. So here's another thing that comes in quite handy. We can go to our curves, we can go to split line, and using an intersection with the front plane, we can split this up into two faces, All right? So it's still one piece, it's still one surface, but now it breaks up the outside edge so that we can select it and use it uh, only half of it when we need it. It makes it a much easier selection process. We could also just use that to trim it instead of doing a split line. You can use these planes like the front plane to trim surfaces. And then depending on if you, uh, if you decide to keep or remove the selection, it's always important. Um, you can only leave that half section there. And again, it helps with the selection process because we're no longer dealing with the entire outside border of that. All right, so now as we look at this from the side, this is the bulk of the geometry we need, but most likely we're gonna need a bit more information. Uh, so this means that we're gonna need some additional planes. Now to create these additional planes, a lot of times it's a good idea to create a reference sketch. All right, so what I wanna do, so I'm gonna show sketch one, and I wanna create a reference plane. All right, so I need to create a new sketch, and I'm gonna create a line. In this case, I'm gonna do a midpoint line from this, and I'm gonna come out 
I'm going to make sure that these are perpendicular. Now you could also do this from your center line of the original, uh, the original spline that we drew from here up to this point. We could do that as well, but really I'm not, I'm not super concerned with the angle of this. I'm only concerned with its location. All right, so I want to make sure that this line uh, lies somewhere on here. I want to make sure that they're coincident, make sure that they're perpendicular. And I'm just going to give it some sort of dimension. I, like, like I said, I don't really care where it is at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and put that that in there. So now we're going to create a reference plane from this line and we're going to use our secondary reference as the front plane. Now what that does is it rotates it 90 degrees off of the front plane around this line using it as an axis. And the reason I didn't really care about where that specific one was, I'll go ahead and hide sketch one and sketch four, is because now I can take this and I can make a bunch of offset planes. Uh, for instance, if I want to make four planes each spaced out one inch, I could do that. If we needed a bunch of additional cross sections, I could simply make those very easily. I could flip it both directions. Um, in this case, I will make a second plane that is two inches offset, right, to give me some additional curves uh, up in that area to help me control it. Because back here, this edge is really going to control a lot of the shape. But as we get up closer to the head, we might want some additional control on it, right? So on plane one, let's go ahead and start a new sketch. And it's going to rotate it based on the orientation and everything. And it, it becomes kind of a pain sometimes, but just rotate it to a nice view where you can see it. Go to your convert entities drop down to intersection curve. And we want to select both of these surfaces and say, okay. So what this does is it gives us something that we can convert to construction and use as a reference for, uh, in this case, we're going to use this as a reference for creating a spline. All right. So again, we're going to follow the same process. You've seen this many times already. We're going to just do three lines. We're going to do an intermediate line, and then we'll do um, three at the bottom. We'll go ahead and make sure that it is merged with that. In this case, we'll make them collinear. We'll make this first one up here collinear as well. And then we'll do the same process that we've done before on the past couple examples. We'll make them collinear. We'll make them equal. Uh, just again, to make it easier for us to control, making them equal helps out quite a bit. You don't have to make them equal, but it's a good idea if you don't, that you add some sort of, uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and flip this around, some sort of dimension to them so that they don't overlap each other. All right. So in this case, if I drag one back, it's perfectly easy to, to, to sort of move that around. I've got this intermediate point. As we rotate it around, we need to start to imagine what we want this handle to look like, how big we need it to be. If we want it to be um, fatter, in this case, up closer to the palm, fatter down closer to the fingers, we can do those sorts of things by just controlling this. I'm going to go ahead and say, OK, that's going to be a pretty good scenario for us. We'll do this again on the other plane, rotate it around, do an intersection curve again one more time. We'll say OK. We'll make both of these construction. And I have this set up to be C on my keyboard. It makes it a little bit quicker. And let's go ahead, in this case, let's use a standard spline. All right. So we're going to dra drag this out, and we're going to drag it straight down to here and hit Escape. Once you do, you want to make sure that you activate these handles. And you'll notice that I'm displaying the control polygon. That is different than a style spline. If you right click on a standard spline, you can show the display control polygon, you can turn it off. It's just a different way to visualize what's going on. So we're going to make this tangent here, we're going to make this tangent here. And then we can control this by dragging these handles out. All right, now the big difference is really the control over the curvature. Now we could make this equal curvature with this line. But if you've been doing this type of work for a while, you'll, you'll understand that a straight line has zero curvature. So making it equal curvature doesn't really help you out too much. But what we're really looking for, and I'll go ahead and I'll do um, rotate this around and use Alt on the keyboard to rotate the angle around. And what we're really looking for is that these are roughly the same or very similar shapes. Just this one's going to be a bit smaller. And then we can say OK. All right, and lastly, what we want to do is we're going to show we're going to go ahead and show sketch one and sketch two. And we're, we're going to create one final plane. All right, so we're going to create a reference plane. 
and we're going to select our spline and its endpoint. Now remember we put a horizontal relation here so that this plane is actually just going to be an offset of our right plane, but that's okay. We want to make sure that we apply it to the geometry rather than the surrounding uh, planes in this case. Now the reason that we want to do that again is because if things change, if things update, we want our planes and our sketches and our geometry to update. So in this case, we don't need to do an intersection curve because we have the ends here. Now these are perfectly valid for us. We're gonna go ahead and do, again, we'll do a standard spline just to sort of speed the process up. But typically, if I was designing this, what I would do is style splines for everything, all right? So there's no reason to not have that kind of control. And then again, I'll, I'll use control eight on my keyboard, which is a normal two, all right? So we're looking at a normal two view. And then I'll, I'll sort of use these to control this. Now in this case, I'm gonna sort of get away from this shape and I wanna create a more rounded shape. All right, so now what we have is essentially a skeleton of what we're gonna create. Now you'll notice that these don't have any helper surfaces. Now there's an important differentiation here because this is constantly changing in terms of curvature in this direction. Now it's extruded, so in uh, in this case, in the Z direction, there's no curvature, but in the X, Y direction, there is curvature. So if we extrude this, it's not gonna help us out at all. The end, however, we can do an extrude and, and create that sort of helper surface here because this top and this bottom are normal too. Uh, they have that curvature that sort of goes flat here. And the same thing at the bottom, doesn't help us to have an extrude here uh, simply because this is not uh, not necessarily standard. We could take this edge and extrude it out. I'm not gonna do it in this case, I'm gonna let it float, but we could, again, apply that additional control if needed. So let's go ahead and in this case, I'm gonna hide Revolve 1 and fit to screen, so we're just focusing on this. I can actually hide Revolve 2. We don't really need to see that either. And we're gonna create a boundary surface. So for this, direction one is gonna be this top edge and direction two is the bottom edge. Now by default, it's gonna go straight between them and that's fine. I can apply tangency at the top and tangency at the bottom. Now again, curvature isn't really gonna bias anything uh, simply because curvature doesn't help because there's no curvature in that direction. Uh, but there is tangency, we will apply a direction. For our direction two, we're gonna grab this edge we're gonna grab our intermediate curves, and at the bottom, we wanna grab this edge. All right now, it might be kinda of hard to see on the screen, but we have some other curvature display type things that we can show. A mesh preview and kicking up the mesh density oftentimes is a very good way to get an idea of what the curvature is doing because it's the, the mesh in this case will tighten up or loosen up in certain areas. All right, so we get a good idea of how this thing is changing shape and everything's okay. We have tangency applied to the top edge and the bottom edge. We can add influence, additional influence between that, but in most cases, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's a bad idea because it'll increase the tension of the surface on the inside of it, all right? So if you have multiple direction two curves, if you're applying tangency in other areas, uh, such as this upper edge, if we apply a tangency to this face, what's gonna happen is it's gonna push this influence going from top to bottom, and it's gonna bind up in certain areas. Now on the bottom, we can apply a tangency here, right? because we can do a direction vector, we can say normal to profile, which is essentially the same thing, um, but we can't apply a tangency because it would be going out in the wrong direction. We can also look at the curvature display at zebra stripes, and we can also turn on curvature combs. Now when we look at curvature combs, it's a good idea to reduce the scale a little bit and increase the density. That's gonna help you visualize this. Now the number of curvature combs we see here is directly proportional to the mesh. So if we reduce that number, oh, we're gonna we're gonna see things a little bit differently. All right, and so what we're looking at here is there are some, some bad areas. So we have some areas where we've got some bad geometry. And as we're looking at this, things like applying tangency or normal two vectors, things like that, those are areas that could have a negative effect. So if we come up to the top and we increase the influency of the tangency up here, you'll notice that that actually gets quite a bit worse. All right, so we're gonna drag this down. And what this is telling me is that the curvature at the start is good, the curvature at the end is good. Um, this one isn't too bad, but it, it, gets a little, it gets a little bad uh, sort of going into this area here, all right? 
And we're going to take a look at what this means. So we're going to say OK. And we're going to take a look at the surface. Now it doesn't look too bad. We go to our Evaluate tab, go to our Zebra Stripes, and we'll say OK. Let's look at this thing from a front view. All right, so you see how these Zebra Stripes sort of break up and zigzag here? Right, this is where we run into issues, where we see curvature combs, and we see where they're producing problems. We go up to the top view. Uh, everything looks nice and smooth from here and everything sort of bulges out here just fine. In this area here where it starts to break up a little bit, that could potentially be an area of concern. But for the most part, this actually doesn't look too bad. It looks pretty good. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to hide some of these areas. Go ahead and hide our, um, we'll leave the surface trim, we'll hide our extrude, and then we want to mirror what we have here. So we're going to mirror bodies, we're going to mirror this, and this bottom piece here. And we're going to, of course, go around the front plane. That's where we drew everything. And we'll knit the surfaces together. And we'll say OK. All right, so this is our shower handle for the most part. Right? And, and what, again, what we're looking for is we've got some areas where this may or may not be very good. We go back to evaluate. We'll turn the zebra stripes back on. But in this case, we'll do vertical. And what we're looking at is the transition across the mirror. Now this is the entire reason why we do things like helper surfaces, we do normal to profile, is we wanna make sure that as we go across that top edge, as we go across the mirror plane, that we've got a smooth transition. And everything looks pretty good here. I don't really see any areas of concern. The reason that this dips down and comes back is because of our curvature. It has nothing to do with the fact that we've got any bad geometry going across the mirror. Let's look at this from the side view. And again, we, we've got some sort of geometry here that's probably less than ideal. It's breaking up in this area. And what we would need to do is go back to our sketches. And uh, let's see, we've got sketch five and sketch six. And notice that most of our trouble is coming from where we use the standard spline. In the area where we used our style spline and we added three collinear sections, that was all good, right? So everything's nice and smooth in that area the area where we use the standard spline and we didn't have as much control over the curvature, that's the area where we're starting to see some, some degradation in our zebra stripes and our curvature combs and things like that. We do a curvature analysis, that's also apparent here because as we look at this from the side, the area up here, we use a standard spline on the end, a standard spline right here. Between those two areas, we've got some issues with curvature. Now it's not necessarily an issue, but it's not as nice and smooth transition as it is in the back where we used a style spline. All right, so keep these kinds of things in mind when you're designing these. The style spline is going to help you have much more control over it. So as we're looking at this, I'm really happy with the shape. I can go ahead and make sure that everything is knitted together. So these two are knitted based on the mirror, but this back piece isn't. I'm going to go ahead and merge those together. The last thing we need to do is connect this to the main part of our shower, right? So this needs to blend in over here. Right? Now, depending on how tight of a transition you want, how far you want this to go, you might do this a few different ways. What I'm gonna do is sketch on the top plane, and I'm gonna draw some reference lines. I'm gonna do a four construction line, it comes out to here, and I'm gonna do a midpoint construction line that's just vertical. All right, so we wanna make sure that this is either vertical or perpendicular to this line, and then we're gonna do a three-point arc. We want to make sure that we go from the top and the bottom edge, and then we bring this back. Now, the main reason that we have these references here is simply to make sure that this arc is symmetric. Now, we could also use vertical relation and make sure that there's a midpoint relation here, but it's really more work than it's worth when you can just draw these two lines. Now, because this piece is a solid, we can do a few different things. We can take this edge and we can use the split feature so we can go up to Tools, or Insert feature, and down to Split. If you don't have Split on your, on your tabs here, and I've already added it here. We can take Split, we can uh, cut the selected body, and what it'll do is we can automatically remove this piece, we can consume the cut body, and what we're left with is this open section that we need to blend to. Then we can go to our Surface tab, we can go to Delete Face, and we can simply remove this, and now we're left with a surface. Now we could also do the same thing by taking this, going to curves and creating a split line, which would split the faces up, and then we could delete that as well. Let's go ahead and hide the sketch. Both produce the same end result, and what we're looking for is a surface. 
that curve that we created, that arc that we created is going to dictate how much we remove, how much we cut away. So if we make this smaller, maybe we decide to add some dimensions, we'll make this five and a half. We can then drag this back and cut away a little bit more at a tighter radius. And then we wanna blend these two together. Now it's important when we start to blend things together that we, whenever we have symmetry that we work with that symmetry. So I'm gonna start by selecting my front plane, going to curves, going to split line, and I wanna split this body top and bottom where it intersects the front plane. So I didn't break the surface up, it's still one surface body, we can look up here. But what it allows me to do is select a curve that's only part of it. I don't have to worry about my selection process. And then we might possibly wanna, in this case, sketch on the front plane. So this is gonna allow us with a style spline to dictate how we want these things to intersect. So we're gonna be going from this point, and again, I'll just, I'll drag a couple lines out and we'll come over to this point. So we're gonna make sure that this line is tangent. We're gonna make sure that the first three lines are collinear, and I'm gonna make them equal again, and we'll do the same thing up here. Now sometimes it's easier to make them collinear and equal first, because oftentimes they're pointing uh, out in, in another direction, and then make them tangent with surrounding geometry. And you'll notice that we've got sort of a, an intermediate issue, an intermediate problem. So as we're looking at this, we might have too many points or we might be trying to induce too much curvature in here. So as we look at this, I deleted a point which removed my relations. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make this one collinear. So again, sometimes the selection process is hard in these areas. You might need to deselect a few things. And then we'll try to make these collinear. Now I have two of them here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'll make them equal. All right, so as we look at this back from the front plane, uh, it's, it's a tight section here, and we wanna make sure that we don't try to induce too much curvature in too small of an area. So sometimes taking this down to uh, two segments on one end might be a little bit easier to handle, especially when you're working in a, in a small area like this. So everything there is okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process on the bottom side. I'm gonna rotate this down and I'm gonna do uh, one, two sections and do one intermediate and then one, two, three coming in here. I'm gonna pull this over to this point. I will then make it tangent. So hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. We're following the essentially the same exact thing over and over again. Tangent, collinear, equal relation, and this is gonna give us all the control that we need for these splines. So we'll make these two collinear as well as equal. View it from the front. And this is how we're gonna be blending in. All right, so you might start to see the shape coming to life here, right? So we've got the top and the bottom curve and we're gonna let the rest of it float. We could also create a 3D curve that comes into here, but it's a little bit more complicated and honestly, the gains are not that great. So we're gonna do a boundary surface from here we wanna right click to selection manager. So we're gonna go from here and we wanna make sure that we grab all three of these segments right up to the mid plane. We're gonna say, okay. Now we still have our mesh preview and everything on. I'm gonna turn that off for now. And then for our direction two, we're gonna select this. Now, because it is an open sketch, it's gonna automatically go into the selection manager. And for both of those, we wanna say normal to profile. All right, this is essentially the same thing as using tangency with a, with a helper surface, with an extruded surface. And for our direction one, we're gonna use curvature and notice that it gives me an error. Now it tells me that the curvature does not match at the points, right? So sometimes you'll get that error and it might only allow you to do tangency. So you might wanna come back and apply tangency and see how that changes things. So from our top view, you can see what it's trying to do here, all right? It sort of bulges out, does this, you know, weird little bump here and then bulges in here. Now in these cases, we can actually use the tangency influence and get a very drastic change to the shape on the screen, right? It's trying to roll the surface over. So what this is telling me is that it's really trying to do too much in too small of an area. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, and we're gonna take a look at the results, all right? So it's, it's not horrible, but what it's doing is it's taking this rather smooth shape and it's trying to push it into this area and it's really having some trouble. Now, when you run into something like this, 
you typically will make an intermediate curve to help control the transition of the shape. We might also decide to move this closer to the shower head because if this is the shape we want, we might wanna bring it a bit closer. Let's go ahead and let's try to move that. All right, so it's six and a half inches. Let's make it five and a half, bring it a bit closer. And notice the boundary surface fails. Now the boundary surface probably fails because of our sketches. And if you look at this, this sketch flipped. And that does happen from time to time. You might need to come back in and remove some of these relations. Like for instance, this tangent relation so that we can move these points back around. And notice that they sort of uh, collapsed on themselves, right? So we've got, we've got some issues with some of these points. Let's go ahead and maybe move things around. Maybe if I delete this point, it sort of folded on themselves, right? So if we take this and we remove the collinear relation, we try to move these points around. You notice it's a bad situation that we got into. And this does happen from time to time when you leave things underdefined, because these points are gonna sort of stay where they were. We're gonna discard and edit the changes. We're gonna do a control Z. We're gonna push that back. And before we do anything, we're gonna go back into the sketch and we're gonna take a look at these curves, right? So these curves are where the root of all our problems are because this line is sort of folded back on itself and this point ended up back over here. All right, so this is a bad situation that you don't wanna be in. So we're gonna, we're gonna delete these splines and we're gonna start over again. And we're gonna make sure that we have full control over everything, but we wanna make sure that we define it in a way that we're not running into issues. All right, to simplify things, I'm gonna put you know, only two instances on each side. I'm gonna make this tangent here. Again, same exact process. I'm gonna make these collinear and make them equal as well. We'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll make this one tangent and then we'll make these two collinear and equal. And the important thing here is that we want to apply a dimension. Right? Even if this dimension is going to change, we're going to make sure that we have a dimension so that when things move and things adjust, we don't have to worry about them folding on each other. All right? So now if we shrink this thing up, these aren't going to move because they have, they're fully defined. The only thing that can float around is this, and that's not really that big of a deal. So we do the same process on the bottom, and this will prevent these things from, from getting in that situation where they're folded back on themselves and they're in a situation where you have two points at the same and they're really hard to move. Now there are ways around that. You can right click, you can use the selection manager and you can get them into a situation where you can select one point and move it around. But it's honestly, it's more frustrating than it's worth, especially if you have multiple points that ended up collapsing on themselves. It's much easier to go back and redefine this and just give it some dimensions. Even if they're arbitrary at this point, we wanna make sure that we know that this thing is gonna update properly nice and smooth, we're gonna exit and rebuild. And the reason it's it's failing is because we added new curves here and it doesn't, it can't find the old ones, right? So we just need to come in and we need to select the new curves for it and say, okay. Now again, we're gonna do a normal to profile and say, okay. And again, we still have that sort of weird transition. So now let's go into sketch two. Let's move this to 5.5 and it updates fine. All right, so this is the scenario that we were looking for. Maybe not the geometry we were looking for, but that's the scenario that we're looking for. And the last thing that we wanna do is finish this off and make it one solid body. So under features, we're gonna again mirror this body. And again, it's around the front plane. Now, if we did everything right, we're gonna knit the surfaces. If we did everything right, we should see that dashed tangent line go across the midline or the mirror line. Now that's Based on my display settings, I have tangent lines as phantom. And I like to do that because that quickly lets me see what's tangent and what's not. Then we're gonna knit this, this, and this together. And when we do, because it's a closed area, it's watertight, we can use this create a solid option. All right, so now if we go to our display and we hide our edges, we have a nice smooth transition between everything. We can bring our other solid body back in and we can merge those together if we want or do whatever else we need to with this design. So that is an overview of how to do some of this complex surfacing, right? So the big takeaways that you should have hopefully gained from here is style splines 
much better at controlling tangency and curvature in these organic type shapes. It gives you a lot more control. You just have to be aware of things like underdefining them. But if you add three segments at the start, three segments at the end, you make them collinear, you make them equal, it's gonna increase the curvature. It's gonna help you increase the control over the curvature, but also increase the quality of that. You know, so if we go back and we evaluate and we look at zebra stripes, we look at curvature, um, even though it's probably not ideal in these areas, we, we still have pretty good curvature combs and we have pretty good zebra stripes in these areas. And we don't have to worry too much about bad geometry. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and would love to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts or suggestions for other videos in the comment box below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit LearnSolidWorks.com for more SolidWorks tips, tricks, and tutorials.